Well, ho there. Someone has stolen my Ford Lightning and is taking it for a joyride. Oh, they want to line up for a race. Okay, well, three, two, one, go. Oh, jeez. I'm flooring it. This was the fastest accelerating truck on Earth. <laughs> and now it is a complete and total dinosaur. Wow. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And this is my new Ford Lightning electric pickup truck that in previous videos I called dumb and a joke and it can't tow and stupid. And well, that is absolutely true in many ways, but it's not unusual and it's not unprecedented for a Ford Lightning to be dumb and stupid and a novelty and can't tow. That's actually what the Lightning was before this EV pickup truck. And next to it is some of the Lightning's biggest competition from the 90s and the 2000s. To my left, a 2003 Dodge Ram SRT10 six-speed manual. And to my right, a 1991 GMC Cyclone. These were both some of the fastest trucks in their day, but they are both completely useless at being a truck. The payload capacity on both around a thousand pounds, the towing capacity less than 2,000 pounds, so that does make them dumb and stupid and useless as trucks, but it doesn't make them any less cool, and that's the point I'm going to try to make today about the Ford Lightning, but there is one key difference. But before I show you some more stupid, useless trucks, I'd like to thank Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. I've had my Titanium Ridge for a few years now, and I love the simple design, and it's held up really well, but I think it's time for an upgrade. So I've treated myself to an 18 karat gold-plated Ridge, which has just arrived, and will unbox here, help with the anticipation a little bit. Oh, here we go. Under the cover is a beautiful gold-plated new Ridge wallet with some accessories like the tool here to add on the money clip, which I use on my wallet, as you can see here. I definitely add that on a few replacement straps, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Oh. The Ridge wallet holds up to 12 cards thanks to its expandable pocket, plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors to choose from, and it has a lifetime warranty. That's why these wallets have over 50,000 five-star reviews, and the Ridge team is so confident you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. If you don't love it, you can send it back for a full refund. Plus, you can get 10% off today by going to the link in the description below and use the coupon code Hoovy. So treat yourself to the wonderfully simple Ridge wallet. Link below and use the code Hoovies. So the Cyclone, some of GM's turbocharged goodness, taking the mantle of the Grand National and putting it in a truck, although it is very different than the Grand National. This one has a 4.3 V6, a big turbo, and it was the fastest accelerating truck in the world thanks to its all-wheel drive system hooking up all of that power, which was 4.3 seconds in 1991. Now that remained untouched as far as a record until the Ram TRX and now the Ford Lightning for the fastest accelerator accelerating pickup trucks. This one I'm selling at the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction October 20th through 22nd in Houston along with my Superbird and a few other cars. So let me give you a little tour of it and what makes this thing so cool but also what makes this thing totally completely useless. Yes, the Cyclone really paved the way for high performance trucks. Yeah, you had sport trucks before like the Dodge Little Red Express, the first Lightning, the 454 SS, but none of them went totally crazy at the sacrifice of it being a truck, which this one certainly did. You had the all-wheel drive system from a minivan, but it wasn't really good in the snow because it had these big wide tires and, of course, the body kit. It was all lowered, so it was pretty useless when it came to clearance. The sport suspension meant you didn't have any of the standard utility when it comes to the truck bed as far as any load capacity, based on the GMC Sonoma, obviously, but the bumpers have been removed. This is totally factory. No trailer hitch, no hope of ever having a trailer hitch. So this bed, well, it really is useless. You wouldn't use this thing as a truck. It was just a crazy, insane performing vehicle, and they did a lot of cool things to it. You see the sport seats that are red piped, automatic transmission. They tried to make this thing fancy because it was monstrously expensive for a truck, but really worth it. Let's go for a ride. So the Lightning has this amazing party trick and it's this oomph off the line, almost like an electric car. You power brake it and let it go. Jeez. And then it just whips you back in your seat. But much like an electric car, well, it kind of peters out once you get close to 60. So it really has one party trick and that's for it to go really, really fast 
stoplight to stoplight. Otherwise, it's pretty bad at everything else. Now, GM only made about 2,000 of these, so it is very, very rare and special, and they're appreciating in value a lot. Low mileage ones have brought over $100,000 now, which is crazy to think about, because I imagine they only sold a few thousand of them because how many people wanted to buy a truck that is completely useless as a truck other than accelerating from stoplight to stoplight. It made absolutely no sense, but in the period, there was nothing like this. Forget it being the fastest accelerating truck. This was among the fastest accelerating vehicle period of the time. Faster than a Corvette ZR1, faster than a Lamborghini Countach or a Ferrari 348. It was legitimately quick. I mean, 4.3 seconds to 60 is insanely quick. The Typhoon that came after the Cyclone, the SUV version of this sold a lot better and it's more understandable because you could actually use that thing. It has rear seats. It's fun in that sense. It's more comfortable, not as cramped. But the truck, the fact that it is so useless and goofy and crazy looking is part of its charm and why these things have gotten so desirable. Nobody will ever build a truck like this again. Well, unless it's electric. Well, ho there. Someone has stolen my Ford Lightning and is taking it for a joyride. Oh, they want to line up for a race. Okay, well, three, two, one, go. Oh, jeez. I'm flooring it. This was the fastest accelerating truck on Earth. <laughs> and now it is a complete and total dinosaur. Wow. That is amazing. I even had to jump on him, too, and he just flew away. Well, this thing is awesome, other than that embarrassment at the end, which, speaking of, who is driving this thing? It's already back in the driveway, parked off. Is it really that fast? So the Cyclone is awesome, but amazingly, it's still faster than this 2003 Ram SRT10, even with its big giant V10 under the hood Viper source. But of course, the Ram came out in the early 90s with a V10 engine that eventually found its way into the Viper. So it made sense. It was rather easy to make a V10 SRT Viper truck with 500 horsepower, but probably because it doesn't have all-wheel drive to hook up all that power, the zero to 60 doesn't quite touch the Cyclone. This one is a commemorative edition, so one of just 200 showing 29,000 original miles, and it's owned by my friend Urination Bob. It's actually for sale, and he's actually asked me to retire his, well, pet name I have for him. He thinks the joke has run its course. So let me just get it out of my system finally. Urination, 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 euro, in euro, euro Asian. Euro-Asian Bob, Euro-Asian Bob, Euro-Asian Bob. That is who is selling this car, Euro-Asian Bob. And it is a beautiful, beautiful example of a completely stupid, useless truck. Let's go for a tour. So let's check out the engine of this Viper. As you can see inside, we have the six-speed manual transmission, which is one of the reasons why this truck can't tow. It's not a normal truck transmission. It's like the fancy racing transmission, and jerking it back and forth with a load would ruin it in short order, which is why they say you're not supposed to tow with these things. You also have this beautiful blue stitching. You can see that's part of the commemorative package, one of 279 to be exact. And then under the hood well, are some spicy mods to this thing. You see the intake, it also has headers, really, really nice in here. And this is before Euro Asian Bob has been able to detail this thing up. This is just as is, as he bought it. So really, really nice Mopar battery. So the transmission uh, made it hard for these things to tow, but also the suspension, once again, modified like the Cyclone to where it really didn't have any load capacity. And the sport tires, see the Pirellis here, they aren't rated for any kind of heavy weight. So they actually ended up changing that with the Crew Cab SRT10. I think it had a 7,000 pound towing capacity. They raised up the suspension a little bit, changed things to make it a little bit more useful. But this is the one that everybody wants. It's the most desirable, the most expensive, the six-speed original iteration SRT10s. But it is very very stupid, but amazingly fun to drive. Well, I've had a Viper before, but I've never driven a manual Viper truck. It makes the same noises. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, except you're up high in a giant truck with a big, long truck shifter. I'm getting right on the highway here so I can flog it. One, two, three, go. <laughs> it broke loose. Jeez. That, that is pretty darn wicked fast. I mean, it's hard to believe that the Cyclone is faster to 60 
other than the launch on those things is just so ridiculous, whereas this thing obviously struggles for traction. But what a goofy truck. And people were paying new $50,000 or more for one of these when you could have gotten a regular cab rear wheel drive V8 Ram 1500 for like 20 grand back almost 20 years ago. <laughs> so ridiculous. I mean, the same cheap plastic dash and door panels and things. They did class it up a little bit with these nice bucket seats. It's still a pinch though, like an old truck. And being a six speed manual, the V10 is now at 1500 RPM. It is just puttering along. It's actually quite comfortable. The Cyclone is certainly rad, a shoe in at a radwood show, but the 2000 cars, well, some are calling it lit, like litwood. Another one they're calling it 04 Rich. It's one of my favorite Facebook groups where basically they're talking about cars from 2004, back when Pit My Ride, MTV Cribs, and the music videos were all the rage still on MTV. And us young people were looking at that and the pop stars, actors buying all these crazy vehicles and houses and looking at that as sort of an aspirational thing. And most certainly one of these crazy stupid trucks would have been in the driveway of many of sports athletes and rappers and movie stars and TV people. It's just so darn cool. And one of the last best examples of automakers doing absolutely crazy things in the mid 2000s before the recession when, well, all the fun got taken out of cars. Now we're seeing a little bit more recently when it comes to fun with trucks, because obviously people want big, powerful, off-roady trucks they can jump for whatever reason. And electric vehicles are getting crazy and fast and fun. Well, because it's the future. It's the easiest way now to get the most performance, crazy bonkers performance out of cars. And well, it's green. It makes a good political statement, unlike this V10 gas guzzling pickup truck. I just noticed the gigantic Infinity speaker behind me, and that appears to be factory with the Infinity stereo. So a giant subwoofer, uh, that's that's what it's hauling. That, that's about it. You have that cover on the back with a spoiler that would probably be almost impossible to take off, so you can't really use the truck to haul things other than golf clubs. <laughs> this is so stupid, but so, so amazingly cool. There it is in the mirror again. The lightning. He's lining up another time? Okay, I'm gonna jump this time. One, two, three, go. Oh, I forgot I have to shift, it's a manual. But he's still flying away. He definitely had me in the second gear and then I had to shift and he pulled away and in third, well, that thing runs out of steam. So this truck was actually keeping up. It probably would have eventually passed it when that electric motor ran out of steam, but still. It embarrasses this thing from a 20 mile per hour roll and well, a stoplight, obviously. Well. The man himself. Hey, what's going on, Tyler? Your ears are burning, so you stole my truck. It's right. Euro Asian Bob. Say it with me. Euro Asian. Euro Asian. I got. It. I thought it was Rob, but he's too scared to be in these videos with me. He's the one who bought the other half of this truck, and uh, yeah, he's too scared to be in the videos anymore with all the backlash and things. So. Where you been? I've been waiting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Man, so, so what did you so think much. of the lightning? Oh man, that's crazy. That torque is just insane. I mean, just. Boom. It's really you know. fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's cool. Your truck is really, really fun too. It is also really stupid. And that's why I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's bonkers. It's totally bonkers. It is. You know, I can't believe it actually got built. I mean, when you think about what they did, I mean, the fact that this actually got green lighted, it's pretty amazing. It is. So how much you want for it? How much? Yeah. Huh? Uh, on the website is $49.95. Four thousand nine hundred ninety-five. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you missed a nine there. I just told. Yes. Forty-nine. Forty-nine ninety-five for a commemorative edition, yeah, low miles, special condition. Truck. Wow. Probably one of the most desirable SRTs. Tempting, but I need to deliver my final thoughts. So, excuse me for a minute. Maybe you have some business to take care of over in the bushes. Yeah, I feel but an urge. He still wants to keep the joke going. <laughs> yes, I mean, all three are very fun, enjoyable cars to drive, and they are both at the limits of truck performance in their period, just like the Lightning that smashes them all, even with its regular battery. So what's the difference? Well, Ford doesn't treat this electric pickup truck like a fun, goofy novelty that, in my opinion, it is. Yes, it can tow a lot more, 7,700 pounds, but so could the original Ford Lightning and the second generation. The second generation, I think, was a 5,000 pound towing capacity, supercharged 5.4 V8, which is probably why it was used in the Fast and the Furious to haul all the auto parts at the racer's edge. It is an icon, but it is a novelty, and Ford is touting this thing as a valid replacement to a gasoline 
normal pickup truck and it's just not there yet. If they marketed it more as a fun thing with all the amazing technology, performance, and its limited capabilities, and not so much as a viable replacement to gasoline vehicles, I think they would get much, much better press and I don't think it would affect their sales at all if they did this with a crazy body kit and some crazy colors and made some fun out of it like they did with the previous generation Lightning or like the Ram SRT or the GMC Cyclone. Now this isn't me saying that electric cars will never be a viable replacement to gasoline cars but at least right now well it's clearly not especially when it comes to towing and the charging infrastructure and all the limitations that I pointed out in previous videos so why not have some fun? This is a really cool, amazing truck, but it is stupid and dumb and kind of useless in some ways, much like me. Thank you for watching.